Greetings and salutations, my brothers and sisters. We want to welcome you to our online service right here at 3B Escarpment Road. Before we head over to the service today, I want you to click on this link and share it with a family, a friend, or a co-worker. And join us together as we worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. God has something in store for you as we head over to the service now. God bless you. Greetings everyone. Please take note of the following announcement for the week commencing Sunday, August 29, 2021. Our focus for August is celebrate the church and nation. As we approach the end of another church year, let us celebrate and give God thanks for holding our church and nation together throughout this pandemic. We invite you to continue participating in our weekly prayer meeting on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. on Zoom and our Power Hour Fasting on Wednesdays at 12 noon on Zoom. Our 3B Bible Study continues every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. on Zoom and YouTube. Join us as we continue studying the Word. The Escarpment Road New Testament Church of God District Women's Ministry presents its Missions Project, Help Us End Period Poverty, from July 1 to September 30. You may support this project by donating sanitary products and placing them in containers provided at each local church or by making monetary contributions. You may also give online at spuropen.com. For more information, you may contact your local women's ministry president or call our church office at 876-977-3221. Help us end period poverty. Together we can. On August 19, the Government of Jamaica revised the COVID-19 measures with a view to contain the increasing transmission of the virus. These changes have impacted our Sunday services. Next week, Sunday, September 5, we will maintain having only one service, which will be aired at 10 a.m. on our YouTube channel. Only service participants and our technical team will be accommodated in the sanctuary. We invite everyone to log on to our YouTube channel at 10 a.m. Although physically restricted, let us remain spiritually connected and move forward with faith and power, assured that God is with us. Today, you are being called to duty as we launch the recruitment of church workers for 2021 to 2022. We invite you to partner with our church to offer your services within our various ministry divisions, including worship, fellowship, discipleship, evangelism, missions, and more. You may indicate your areas of ministry by completing our electronic recruitment form. This form may be accessed in our WhatsApp group or you may send an email to escarpmentroad 3 b at yahoo.com to request the form. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58 says, Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Please take note of our weekly online opportunities for worship and fellowship as projected on your screen. Look for the Zoom meeting links each week in our WhatsApp groups or send an email to escarpmentroad3b at yahoo.com to receive the login details. We extend best wishes to everyone celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week. May God continue to bless you richly. And our thought for the week comes to us from Matthew chapter 16 verse 18 and it says, And I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. These are the notices. Have a blessed week.
the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness, the world and all who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. He who, who has not lift, lifted up his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive blessings from the Lord and the righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be ye lifted up everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, Lift up your heads, everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. This morning we are here in spite of lockdown to give thanks and praise to the King of glory. Hallelujah. Praise the King. Bless the Lord. We exalt you in this place, God. Because our God is a holy God, he requires holiness from us he requires our righteousness so let's just take this time to consecrate ourselves before him hallelujah everybody sing holiness holiness is what i long for
morning, church. Let us stand and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for your grace, mercies, and understanding, Lord. Lord, I thank you for everything you have done, Lord. Lord, I just thank you for providing me with a mother, Lord. Lord, I thank you for everyone who's at church, Lord. Lord, I pray and I just thank you, Lord, for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Thank you for the speaker, Lord. Lord, thank you for the pastor, Lord. Lord, I thank you for everybody, Lord. Lord, I just thank you that you are the only God, the one and true God, Lord. Lord, I thank you for your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Lord, I thank you for this church, Lord. Lord, I thank you for everybody, Lord. Lord, I pray that you bless everybody in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, I just thank you that you are always with us, Lord. That as we drive on the road, Lord, get into our destination. Lord, I just pray that you bless each and every one of us who is driving on the road, Lord, who is walking to their destination, Lord. Lord, I just thank you for blessing us, Lord. All in my name, in Jesus' name, amen. church this morning's reading will be taken from jude 1 to 7 i am reading from the king james version jude jude the servant of jesus christ and brother of james to the, to them that are sanctified by god the father and preserved in jesus christ and called mercy unto you and peace and love be multi be multiplied Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance Though ye once knew this how, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he have reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day even as Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth from an for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal life, eternal fire. We have reached the end of this scripture reading. Thanks be to God, amen. Bless the Lord. The hymn for this morning is Jesus Bids Us Shine. Jesus bids us shine with a pure, clear light, like a little candle. Shine, you and your 
Welcome to God's house. My name is Ruel Gale. This is our welcome balloon. We are all one big family. We're all different, but we're all one in Christ. <laughs> if you're here for the first time, type in the chat, big family. Welcome to you, Rev Kinnock and your family, and all the church leaders. Welcome to all the participants and everyone who makes this service work. Welcome to all my children's church friends and all the church members.
a burden down, just remember God is standing by Thank you, Lord hey. So there's no need to cry God is standing by Thank you, Lord hey. So don't you worry and don't cry Up running to my just remember God is standing by Lord is so don't worry and don't cry Trust in the Father Yay! So Good morning, church family. I'm Trisha. Most of you might not know me, but I do know that the kids know me. I'm one of the leaders from Children's Church, and this morning, I'd just like to come on here and say, and give some encouragement to our kids as they go back to school. And as a teacher in Children's Church, I realize that some of the stories that we tell the children become lessons for us as well. Let me tell you a story. This is Envy. Emily has been a part of our family um, since my son was two. He's now nine. He would go everywhere with this, with this toy. He would go to church. He would eat. He would um, sleep with it by his bedside. He would go everywhere with it. And he would have it in his hand like that. Some of you guys might still remember, might remember that he would play with Emily on the pews at church during service. But even now, Though he is nine, he still operates as if Emily is in his hand. Even so, I had to say to him, remember, you can use two hands. One hand keeps doing stuff, while one hand has an invisible Emily. So he operates as if Emily 
is still in his hand. It got me thinking, in the same way that he operates as if there's an invisible enemy, what if we were to operate as if we do have an invisible God? So we operate, when we go to school, we're going back to school now, whether it be face to face or online, regardless of where we are learning, we can still have the invisible hand of God with us. Mothers, parents, we understand the distress that we're under right now, but we can still operate as if the invisible hand of God is with us. The invisible hand of God guides us, it protects us, comforts us, and it provides for us. So the interesting thing about that is we can only see God's invisible hand when we look back on our lives. So we will look back and we will say, oh, that is the aunt that helped to pay my school fee. Oh, this is the uncle that took me to school and offered comfort to me. So when we look at the invisible hand of God, we see it. Not necessarily in our lives today, but we can all we can see that God was always around. So remember guys, we read our Bibles every day, we pray every day, and we tell a friend about Jesus. And this week, we can tell them about the invisible hand of God. You shall you praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know the welcome has already gone, but I need to do a special welcome for two homesters who are here with us this morning. Reverend Rudolph Grant and Dr. Michelle Grant. In fact, I'm going to be asking Dr. Grant to, to come at this time and pray for the children. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us all stand in the presence of the Almighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we present our children to our God. Hallelujah. Bow your heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you again, my God. You are our God. You are our Father. You are our King. Hallelujah. We exalt you, God. We praise you. We lift you up. We adore your holy name. Father, this morning we present the children into your hands. Lord, your word says children are an heritage from the Lord. You gave them to us, God. And we have a responsibility to care for them, to protect them, to provide for them. But God, you are the great God and only you can give us the strength to do these things. This morning, in the name of Jesus, we ask you for a prayer coverage over the children. Lord, we are in unusual times, and the children are afraid. Some may not even understand what's going on, but I ask you, God, to cover them under your blood, mighty God. We ask you in the name of Jesus to protect them from all evil, from all sickness. God, we ask you to provide for them. Hallelujah. This morning, in the name of Jesus, we ask you, God, to bring comfort to those who are hurting, to those who may be in need, God, we ask you to provide for them. God, for those who are already ill, we ask you to heal them, bring deliverance to them. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you, God, to one more time, Lord, direct their lives, direct their associations. Lord, prepare ahead of time, God, for their education. We ask you, God, that as they go off to their various levels of education, that mighty God, you will be with them. 
Lord, as you were with Moses, hallelujah, and you guided him, Lord Jesus, into the knowledge, hallelujah, of the things of Egypt, hallelujah. This world is not theirs, hallelujah. And so, God, as they go through in this land as if it was an Egypt, hallelujah, God, that you will rise them up, Lord, hallelujah, as leaders, hallelujah, in this country, Jamaica, land we love, hallelujah. God, I pray that their lives, God, will be such that it becomes impactful to those around them in the mighty name of Jesus. That they will be like a Moses. That they will be like a Paul. That they will be like a Joshua. Hallelujah. Cover your children and lead and direct them, God, in the name of Jesus. And when it's time, God, for them to choose partners, I pray, God, that you'll do the choosing. I pray, God, that you'll direct them. I pray, God, that their associations, hallelujah, and their marriages, God, will be such that it brings glory to your name. Cover them one more time. We give them over into your hands completely. In the mighty name of Jesus, we say, amen, hallelujah. 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 I'm here once more to ask you to give an offering. In fact, to ask you to give your best offering this morning. God has promised to bless. He said, if we give, he'll open us the windows of heaven. And he'll pour us out a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive. And that's going a bit further and said, prove me now. So this morning, we are going to prove God. Hallelujah. For those online, um. I'm going to uh, I'm asking you to give by way of the account number that will be posted on the on the screens. Scotia and um, NCB. And for those in the sanctuary, even though there's much uh, there, there, there's much people inside here, we have two ushers who will come around. And I want to remind us that um, during the week after lockdown. There's the opportunity to come by the church and drop off your offering and your tithes. And if you are going to be giving by way of a, those of us inside the sanctuary, if you are going to be giving by way of a debit or credit card, the facilities are at the back of the church. Let us pray. O oh, holy God, righteous everlasting Father, Lord, I'm speaking to your people now, O oh, great God. And I'm asking your people to give, Lord, to give as you have blessed them. I'm asking your people, Almighty God, to give, hallelujah. And I'm asking you to give your people a heart to give, Almighty God. And as your people give, I pray that you will honor your word because you are not man that you can lie. And you will bless, Almighty God. You open the windows of heaven and the blessings will be poured out, Almighty God, that there will not be room enough to receive. And you will rebuke Satan for our sakes, Almighty God. So, Almighty God, as we give, Bless us, Almighty God, and I pray that that which we give will go a long way, Almighty God, to build to the building of your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Bless the Lord. Let's worship the God who we serve together as we give our offerings. <laughs> Yeah. 
righteousness, the people see his glory. For you, O oh Lord, are exalted over all the earth. Over all the earth. and magnify the name of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, come let us go into the house of the Lord. Bless God. We're going to give God some crazy praise this morning. So wherever you are, just jump up. Jump up to your feet and we're going to give God an amazing praise this morning. Hallelujah. Bless God. Financial. I went to the enemy's camp and I 
up your weapons and flee For the Lord has given me authority To walk all over I command you stay I command you stay in the name of the Lord To drop your weapons and flee For the Lord has given me authority Sorry, not John 1 and verse 6. But the light shineth in darkness. And he could not comprehend it. When I got that scripture this morning, I said, how does that tie in with what we're about to sing this morning? But we are experiencing a lot of darkness in the atmosphere, a lot of darkness in Jamaica. This morning they reported that there's no oxygen in the hospitals. No darkness that. No darkness that there's a lot of death. Which means that a lot of persons are depending on oxygen. We have a lot of children who are just born. Not only persons who have COVID. 
but children who need oxygen, which means that a lot of lives are going to be lost. What is that? Darkness. But our God is still working in the darkness. Can somebody say, God is still working in the darkness. He's still performing miracles. And the enemy and the darkness won't be able to understand it. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Take it down a little bit. Take it down a little bit. Darkness won't be able to understand when people if you go to school and scholarship still are provide. Come on, man. Put your hands together because listen, we serve a God who is still working in darkness. And the enemy won't be under, won't be able to understand it. So whatever situation you are facing, we're gonna lift your hands and we're gonna sing that he is a way maker, that he is a miracle worker. Let's go, that he is a promise keeper, and that he is light. Hallelujah. Somebody say light. You won't even understand. There is light in Jamaica. And the light is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands wherever you are. Wherever you are. Hallelujah. And just speak over your darkness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Speak over your darkness. Speak over your dark situation. Hallelujah. Command that there be light. That will penetrate the darkness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. We worship you, God. We worship you. We worship you, God. One more time. We worship you. Oh, Lord. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Just worship him.
when I don't see it, you work. Even when I don't feel it, you work. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you work. Even when I don't feel it, you work. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't feel it, you work. You never One last stop. time, you just never declare stop. it. Say, even when I don't see it, you work. Yes, even when I don't feel it, you work. Say, you never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop you working. You are here, moving in this place, moving in this place, moving in this place. You are here, and you're mending every heart, Lord. You're healing every heart. You're healing every disease, Lord. I worship you. I worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Lift your hands and just worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Just lift up a worship. Just lift up a praise. Just lift up a thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Whatever your situation today, whatever your situation right now, oh, hallelujah, we have a God that is working. And he never stopped working, even when you don't feel him, when you don't see him. Hallelujah. He says that I'm still working. I'm still working. I'm still working. I'm still working. Let's go right there, even when I don't see you. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Thank you, Jesus. Even when I don't feel it, you are again. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Continue to bless the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, continue to worship the Lord, hallelujah, continue to lift up his magnificent name, hallelujah, hallelujah, we serve a God that never stops working, hallelujah, 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 even when we don't see it, our God is working, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You see, even when we don't feel it, our God is working. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Isn't it awesome that we serve a way maker, that we serve an awesome God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to thank God that he is a way maker. Believe me, he has made some ways in my life that I never thought possible. Hallelujah. We serve an awesome God. I stand here today to deliver the word as was laid upon my heart. First, I want to just bring greetings to our Bishop Leslie Pinocan family. I just pray for his strength during this period. I pray that things that the that God will just make a way in this current situation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I also greet the newly elected council members. I pray your strength as you serve diligently. Hallelujah. And to other members of the congregation and those worshiping with us online. Hallelujah. Finally, I want to greet our visitors as well. <laughs> and another finally is that you don't give a man who loves his wife so much a microphone and not expect him to greet his lovely wife. Hallelujah. So I want to greet my wife, Olivia, who would have loved to be here today. Hallelujah. When you see me looking so polished, it is testament of how awesome my wife is. Uh, I just pray that God continues to bless our union. Hallelujah. I want to share with you today from the book of Jude. The book of Jude is... It's a letter. It's a letter to... It's a letter to believers, and it's a very short letter, one that sometimes gets overlooked by its, because of its brevity and its position. One that when we read it, there is so much there for us to unpack and consume that it's worth spending some time on. And so the author is very clear when he opens the book as to who he is and to whom he is writing. He refers to himself as Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ. Amen. We know that this Jude or Judas, as his right name was, was the half-brother of Jesus Christ. But Jude found it more important to refer to himself as a servant of Jesus Christ rather than the brother of the man Jesus. And I think that apart from being an act of humility, it is a sign for us to understand that it is better to be a servant of Jesus Christ and not just to know Jesus Christ or to know of Jesus Christ. He also is clear as to what or, or to who is intending, intended audience is. And he says, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. So we know that it's a letter to believers. And it's a letter to you. It's a letter to me as believers. I want to hone in on verse 3. 
And it reads, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort that he should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. And it is from this verse that I want to take the main point of my word today. Contending for the faith. Contending for the faith. Let's pray. Our kind, my most righteous Heavenly Father, once again, we just pause to lift up your name, God. I pray, Heavenly Father, that as I speak to your people today, that self will be slain, that, I will, that flesh will be put aside, and that your Holy Spirit will speak through me, and that a word that is ripe for your people at this time will be delivered forthwith. So I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would use me in this moment. I pray, dear God, that you will speak through me by your Holy Spirit. And I pray that somebody will be blessed from what is said today. Amen. Contending for the faith. Now, Jude was saying that he had all intentions to write to these believers about the common salvation. Now, the common salvation there, is, it does not mean cheap. It doesn't mean everybody busy. It means the, 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 the salvation that we share as believers. The salvation that gives us a hope. He was saying that he had all intentions to just give them a word of encouragement, but something caused him to change his mind. Something caused him to urge the believers to, to, to be in a state of battle readiness, to contend for the faith. Because that is what contend means, brethren. Contend means to fight for, to overcome for. So he is urging us as believers today, you and I, and the believers in 70 AD, to contend for the faith. I will seek to answer three questions as I speak today. What is the faith? Why should we contend for the faith? And how? Should we contend for the faith? The faith here, as Jude writes, is it's, it's, it's not a subjective faith. You see, Jude uses the definite article the before the word faith, which means that he is being specific, which means that he is talking about something that his readers should be familiar with. And since he's talking to believers, it's, it means that you and I should be familiar with the faith to which Jude refers. So the first point is that this faith to which Jude refers is, is an objective thing. It is something that is not subject to what you think or what I think or what John Brown thinks. It is objective. It is the faith. It is not a faith. It is not my faith. It's not your faith. It is the faith. Amen. Also, in that same verse, it says that this faith was once delivered to the saints. Now, once there, in another translation, it says once and for all. Which means that there was some completedness to this faith. 
So we get that this faith is objective. We get that this faith is complete. And we also get that it is inherent because it was delivered to the saints by God himself. And we know that when God delivers something, there are no errors. And as such, because of its objective nature and its completedness, it means that we ought not to add or subtract to this faith, to the faith. In fact, Paul, in his letter to the Galatians, in speaking about this faith, Galatians 1 verse 8 and 9, it says, but even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be under a curse. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you receive let him be under a curse so if someone brethren is talking about a faith other than the faith then that person should be cursed in talking about the faith in second timothy in second timothy verse one Paul writes, Where unto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. For the which, which is for the faith, for the gospel, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. So the faith also appoints us to service because here Paul was saying in relation that he was appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher. It is the faith that also appoints you and me to servitude, to serve. It is also true that this faith is accompanied by some level of suffering. You see, when we hold to this faith, it does not mean that our lives are immediately easy and free from persecution and suffering. In fact, quite the opposite is true. It is by holding to this faith that we know that there will be persecution, that we know that there will be suffering. But our Father is able to keep us through so again, what is the faith? The faith is objective. It is complete and inerrant. And it is the word of God as given to the saints. It is the word that has been preserved through the ages. It is the word of God that is now and also then under attack by the enemy. You see, we must contend for that word. We must contend for that faith. We must contend for the faith. We must contend for the true faith as delivered by God. So question, why should we contend for the faith? Why should we contend for this faith that we know will cause us persecution. Why should we contend for it? And the first reason is because it is, a, it is commanded. You see, when Jude writes, I exalt, I exhort you, another word for exhort 
is to strongly urge somebody it is a strong call to action it is something that is not merely saying i am asking you to it is something that is saying you ought to do this it is a command it is a command we are commanded to contend for the faith brothers and sisters If, secondly, I'm sorry, it is not only commanded, but it's an inevitable fight. It is an inevitable fight. It is, it is something where even if you don't fight, the fight will come to you, so you have to be ready for that fight. It is something that if you decide not to fight, the fight will still come to you, and if you are not fighting, you will be defeated. You see, Jude says that There are some men, in verse 4, that certain men have crept in unawares. You see that certain men who have crept in unawares, where, are, where, where have they crept into? They have crept into the church. They have crept into the body of God unawares. You see, that's how the devil works. If you don't decide to fight, then the devil is going to subtly come into your space. If you don't intend to fight, then unknowingly some things are going to come into your space and you're not aware of them because you're not vigilant and it says that certain men have crept in unawares and that's how subtle the enemy is no he's not just going to run in and give you a false doctrine he's not just going to run in and say something that you just know is not true he's going to come in subtly I remember this, the, the, the story of, of Eve and the serpent in the garden. He, he, he didn't just, just come in and say something that is totally untrue. He said that you will not surely die. So it's a little bit of, of, of half truth. And that is, if we're not vigilant, that is what leads us astray. That little bit of half truth. Certain men have crept in unawares. You see, certain men have crept into our churches today. You see, certain men have come into the church of God in 2021. You see, certain men have crept into our faith and they're trying to tell us that you can have your truth, and I can have my truth. We're all going to the same place. You see, certain men have crept in and they have told us that a life in the womb is not really a life. You see, certain men have crept into our churches today and have planted some seeds of false doctrine. And if we're not aware, if we're not willing to contend, then these seeds will grow and our faith and our salvation is at risk. The battle is inevitable. Because it comes at our doorstep. In verses, I'm sorry, 
in verses 5 through to 7, it warns us, Jude warns us what will happen if we don't contend. He warns us what will happen if we fall for these inherent doctrines, these inherent seeds that will be planted in the faith. And he says, I will therefore put you in remembrance. So Jude is reminding us. How the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And he goes on to give another two examples of what will happen if we let ourselves be deceived from the right faith. And he says, the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he reserved in everlasting chains. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh. Now in this three examples here we see where there were three sets of persons angels who would have had a certain relationship who would have had a certain amount of God's favor who would have gone astray and they were ultimately destroyed and as such it is a warning to us today that we should hold fast to the correct faith. We should hold fast to what God has taught us, the word, the inerrant word of God, and we should not fall astray because we will be destroyed. You see, God loved the children of Israel. God favored them, but he destroyed them for unbelief. God loved his angels but he held them in eternal chains for bondage, in bondage for destruction because they left their habitation. And Sodom and Gomorrah, as wicked as that city turned out to be, was a lovely place before. In fact, when Abraham and Lot had their contention, and Lot looked at how beautiful the plains of Sodom and Gomorrah was. He decided that that's where he wanted to be. It was lush and green and very fertile. It was a blessed place. But when they went astray, they were destroyed. And that same warning goes to us today. If we allow ourselves to fall victim, if we allow ourselves to be deceived, if we don't contend for the faith that was given to us, we will be destroyed. It is the faith that preserves us. Hallelujah. Why should we contend? For the faith. Why should we fight to maintain that which is true? It is for our own preservation. We also see another reason for contending for the faith in verse 12. Where it is speaking about these men that have fallen astray. And it describes them as clouds without water. Carried about by winds. Trees whose fruit were with, without fruit. Twice dead. Plucked up from the roots. Now, when you see the clouds in the sky, 
gathered, you're thinking that we might get some rain. When you see the dark clouds gathered, you're thinking that there may be something in those clouds, some rain that may come down after a while. But here Jude is saying that these persons, they are like clouds, but they are empty. They are like clouds that gather, but there is nothing inside of them. They are empty clouds. They are like trees that look beautiful on the outside, but they have no fruit and they have no roots. And so Jude is warning us not to be like these people. Jude is warning us that we ought not to be empty vessels and it is the faith that is the substance that fills us. You see, the Bible tells us that it is faith that is the substance of things hoped for. It is the faith that is the evidence. You see, these people lack substance. They lack the realness of the faith of Jesus Christ. And as such, they are empty. So if we are to produce fruit, if we are to have something inside of us, if we are to reflect on the inside what we portray on the outside, then it means we must have the faith within us. It means that we need to contend for the faith so that we are not led astray and we are not in turn empty. And finally, as to why we should contend for the faith is because it is worth dying for. Hallelujah. You see, 1 Corinthians 4, 7 to 9 tells us that we have this treasure. We have this word. We have this faith in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of God us you see the faith is a treasure and if we treasure something then it means that we're going to fight for it if we treasure something dearly it means that nobody can take it away from us nobody can pervert it if we treasure it dearly and so our faith, which should be the most important thing in our lives, is something that is worth dying for. So we know that the faith is the word of God. We know that we ought to contend for the faith because our very lives depend on it but how do we contend for the faith and one of the first things that jude tells us about contending for the faith and how we ought to do it is that he says we should do it earnestly now when we do something earnestly it means that we persevere when we do something earnestly, we don't give up at the first sign of difficulty. When we earnestly contend for the faith, it means that there is a long suffering. It means that we're going on to the end. It means that comes what may, we will be contending for this faith. Earnestly contend 
for the faith. He also mentions in verse 20 that we should prayerfully contend for the faith. But he, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, we must, praying in the Holy Ghost, you see, we must realize that this is a spiritual fight. And if we're fighting a spiritual fight, it means that we ought to build up ourselves spiritually. And the only way that we can build ourselves spiritually is prayerfully. It is through prayer that we ought, that we can, it is only through prayer that we can build up ourselves in the faith. You see, in contending for the faith, we can't remain the way that we are every day. We have to become stronger, and we become stronger through prayer. The same snare that the enemy would have, would have set for you last year and would have caught you cannot be the same one that he's setting for you this year, and you're still caught up in it. We have to grow. And here Jude is telling us that we should do it prayerfully. And we should pray in the Spirit. You see, when we pray in the Spirit, it is the Holy Spirit that knows our deepest needs. It is the Holy Spirit that knows us more deeply than we know ourselves. The Bible says that we sometimes don't even know what we ought to pray for. But the Holy Spirit intercedes. Hallelujah. In the 21st verse, he gives us another clue as to how we should contend for this faith. And it is through Jesus Christ. In fact, he says, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. In contending for the faith, this is not something that we can do on our own. It is not something that we can do by ourselves it is something that we can only do through Christ who empowers us it is not something that we can just say we're going to do this and we don't ask the Lord to be with us Hallelujah. And finally, we ought to contend for the faith selflessly. Selflessly. You see, because sometimes we are strong, but sometimes there are some among us who falls victim. And in verse 22, it tells us that on these persons, we should have compassion, making a difference. And he says, on others, we should save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Contending for the faith is not a selfish matter. It is not some, something that we just do for, for me, myself, and I. Contending for the faith means that we have to rescue the perishing. We have to have some concern for those who have fallen by false 
teachings. In fact, it tells us that we are to build each other up in the faith because it is in unity that there is strength. You see, the enemy is not just after you. It's not just after me. He's after all of us. And so we have to be our brother's keeper. And we have to selflessly contend for the faith. So, as I approach the end of this rather short passage and short sermon, I urge you today to contend and to keep contending, to earnestly contend for the faith that was given to us by Christ Jesus. Because it is the substance of our salvation. It is the substance of our very existence. And if you are here today, or if you are online, and you have been contending you have been fighting, but it just seems as if the battle is just ever increasing. It seems as if as you take a step forward, then there are two steps back and there are constant challenge and you have to be constantly contending and it seems hard. And it seems as if sometimes you, you feel like you're going to fall. Then I need you to just place the word prayer in the chat so that somebody can reach out to you and offer your word of prayer. And if, if you're also online or here and you have not yet joined the faith, you have not yet come to that pure faith that God is calling you to, then just write the word salvation in the chat and we'll pray for you. Praise and worship team, can you give me just a... You have longed for sweet peace and for faith to increase and have earnestly, fervently pray. Oh, thank you, Jesus. But you cannot have rest or be
Lord, we just want to lift up your name even now, God. We want to magnify your name, Jesus. Lord, we give you thanks that you are who you are. We give you thanks, Heavenly Father, that you have laid, dear God, your word upon the lips of the saints, upon the lips of the apostles, dear God, and that they have passed it down unto us, their Father, so that we can have a hope of salvation. And Father, as we close off today's service, if there is one person in that chat, Heavenly Father, if there's one person online, Heavenly Father, who have decided, dear God, that they want to join this fight, that they want to contend for this faith, I pray, Heavenly Father, that you'll just bless that person even now. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you'll just outpour your spirit upon that person even now, God. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will just allow that person to understand what it is to fight the good fight. Hallelujah. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you'll help them to understand what it is to run the race, dear God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I pray, dear God, for every single person who would have asked for prayer. I pray, dear God, that you will strengthen them as they earnestly fight for their salvation and faith. I pray, dear God, that you'll just continue to be a way maker for them. I pray, dear God, that you'll continue to shine upon them in the name of Jesus. I pray, dear God, that you will never, ever let them feel as if they, are, they will fall. Hallelujah. And I give you thanks, Father, that even today you are still helping us fight as you did in 70 AD when Jude was writing this letter. So I just want to give you thanks once more, God, for today's service. I give you thanks, Father, that the word would have gone out and that it would have fallen where it needs to fall. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that it will bear fruit, dear God. I pray, Heavenly Father, that we will see where your word has grown into the lives of the persons who would have heard. And so I ask you just to bless us as we shall live and go our separate ways today. In your precious and holy name, I pray, dear God. Amen. And amen. Shall we praise the Lord? It has been a good day in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. And you know, I want to say thanks to God for having kept us. You know, and um, Reverend Grant will come and do, and do the benediction for us as he greets us. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. Come on, somebody. Worship the Lord. Hallelujah. We want to give God thanks this morning, this afternoon, for his mercies. Endure it forever. Amen. It is good to be back in Escarpment Road 39 years ago. I gave my life to God in this church. Uh, of course, my wife is before me, but we are here this morning to give God thanks. And the main reason I want to, us as well, greet our host pastor, Bishop um, Pinnock. Yes, and I want to greet his wife. I want to greet the officers. I want to greet the entire Tree B family. Amen. It's a very large family, and most of our family members are overseas. But this morning, very quickly, the reason I'm here is that our daughter is now a student at the University of the West Indies, and we could not allow her to come to the University of the West Indies without presenting her.
to this church and in the care of this church and Bishop Pinnock. Amen. Alana, could you come bring your friend to her friend is with her very quickly, very quickly as we close. It is a group of students from the Mount Alvernia High School that have, are now students. And I just want to present all of them to Trebi. They are yours. Yours to care for, yours to pray for, yours to guide. And so, Bishop Pinnock, we put them into your hands at this time. Okay, at this time... We're going to be pronouncing our benediction. Could you stand with me at this time? And now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Father, the full fellowship of the Holy Spirit, our Comforter, rest, remain, and abide with us all, now and forevermore. And we all say, Amen. God richly bless you. Commencing Sunday, August 29, 2021. Our focus for August is Celebrate the Church and Nation. As we approach the end of another church year, let us celebrate 
and give God thanks for holding our church and nation together throughout this pandemic. We invite you to continue participating in our weekly prayer meeting on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. on Zoom and our Power Hour Fasting on Wednesdays at 12 noon on Zoom. Our 3B Bible study continues every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. on Zoom and YouTube. Join us as we continue studying the Word. The Escarpment Road New Testament Church of God District Women's Ministry presents its missions project, Help Us End Period Poverty, from July 1 to September 30. You may support this project by donating sanitary products and placing them in containers provided at each local church or by making monetary contributions. You may also give online at spuropen.com. For more information, you may contact your local women's ministry president or call our church office at 876-977-3221. Help us end period poverty. Together we can. On August 19, the government of Jamaica revised the COVID-19 measures with a view to contain the increasing transmission of the virus. These changes have impacted our Sunday services. Next week, Sunday, September 5, we will maintain having only one service, which will be aired at 10 a.m. on our YouTube channel. Only service participants and or technical team will be accommodated in the sanctuary. We invite everyone to log on to our YouTube channel at 10 a.m. Although physically restricted, let us remain spiritually connected and move forward with faith and power, assured that God is with us. Today, you are being called to duty as we launch the recruitment of church workers for 2021 to 2022. We invite you to partner with our church to offer your services within our various ministry divisions, including worship, fellowship, discipleship, evangelism, missions, and more. You may indicate your areas of ministry by completing our electronic recruitment form. This form may be accessed in our WhatsApp group or you may send an email to escarpmentroad 3 b at yahoo.com to request the form. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58 says, Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Please take note of our weekly online opportunities for worship and fellowship as projected on your screen. Look for the Zoom meeting links each week in our WhatsApp groups or send an email to escarpmentroad3b at yahoo.com to receive the login details. We extend best wishes to everyone celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week. May God continue to bless you richly. And our thought for the week comes to us from Matthew chapter 16 verse 18. And it says, And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. These are the notices. Have a blessed week. So, you stayed until the end. What a pleasure it was having you. We are so grateful that you stayed and we hope and pray that you were blessed richly by God's word and ministry here at 3B. We want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Remember to continue to like and share. And we look forward to seeing you next week as you come and bring someone with you as we continue to worship God together. God bless you and enjoy the rest of the day.